Okay, everybody, uh, welcome to this afternoon's webinar. It should be really interesting, as you can see. I hope you can see it's cloud services and healthcare, and it's all about cutting through the fog on that. Um, my name is Mark Clark. I'm the Vice President of Marketing for Advanced Data Systems. We're really happy to be able to present uh, today's webinar. Just so everyone on the call has an idea of who we are, um, we are a company that produces uh, software for medical practices, revenue cycle management companies, enterprise networks, a variety of different types of systems. We have over 200 employees. Um, we have a, right now, almost 40-year track record. We started in 1977, so next year is going to mark our 40th anniversary doing this. We are a debt-free, privately-owned company, highly accessible uh, by clients. Our clients love us for that. And, you know, we feature timely implementations and comprehensive training and really excellent support with the, with updates. I mentioned a minute ago about the types of systems we provide, and here they are. Systems for practice management, electronic health records. We have a very nice patient portal. We have a special suite of products for radiology. We have our own Medix RCM for practices that prefer to outsource. Uh, our solutions can be all integrated as a single unified solution or they're available separately. So if a practice only wants practice management, not EHR, that's fine for us. We can go either way. Now what's interesting is we can still do client server, which practices still want, which is interesting given today's um, topic, but the vast majority of clients today, and I think generally across the board, which you'll probably hear about in a few minutes, uh, are opting for the cloud uh, model of um, connectivity. And so to present this, we have someone really special. His name is Marion Jenkins, as you can see. And just to give everybody a little overview on Marion, so everyone knows who he is, he's a, a partner and co-founder of Healthcare Technology Partners. And that the healthcare services division of hosting.com. That's a real interesting website if you want to go there, hosting.com. Healthcare Technology Partners actually helps healthcare organizations define and refine and successfully execute uh, a viable information technology strategy. So it's, it's interesting stuff if you want to take a look at that. Marion himself has over three decades of executive experience and a lot of high growth technology and communication companies. Um, he's completed over 200 healthcare IT projects in 40 states. And if he does 10 more states, he'll have the entire country, right? Um, all right, Marion is a, uh, he's a nationally recognized author and speaker. He has over 150 articles and blogs, and he's done presentations uh, on technology and healthcare. Uh, he's also a contributing author to, uh, to the um, textbook on it called Business Driven Information Technology, and that's published by Stanford University Press. Speaking of Stanford University, uh, Marion happens to have a PhD from Stanford. He is a fellow with the Health Information Management System Society, otherwise known as HIMSS. He's an Eagle Scout, an Air Force veteran, and perhaps most interesting of all, he grew up on a potato farm in Idaho. How about that? I don't know anyone who grew up on a potato farm, but now I do. So we're going to turn this over to Marion, and he's going to take us through all about cutting through the fog. Thanks, Mark, for that great introduction, and welcome to this webinar. I appreciate the introduction from Advanced Data Systems, and I appreciate the time that you're spending as we consider cloud services and cutting through the fog, I was looking for some different graphics to introduce the concept, and then I realized that I had some in my own library. I actually took this picture on the west coast of Ireland a week and a half ago on the cliffs of Mower, and I thought it would be a great visual to introduce the concept. So again, my name is Marion Jenkins, and we're going to jump right into the content. Our outline today, we're going to have a brief introduction of some cloudy concepts. It gets complicated very quickly, and so we're going to use something that hopefully all of you are familiar with, and that's the EHR selection process, and use that as a framework to go through some of the concepts. 
from that, we're going to be able to develop a checklist which you can use in your organization to decide if cloud is the right strategy for you and if it fits into your organization. I will tell you right up front that I am pro-cloud. However, this webinar is going to be very balanced and look at both sides of the issues on-site versus cloud, and you can make your own decision for what's right for your organization. We're going to start wrapping up with some myths, some things that there's a lot of misinformation and hype being promoted on both sides of the issue. And then at the end, we will actually develop a working definition for cloud services so you yourself will actually be able to know and understand what cloud services are from a working standpoint. I want to begin with a very gracious thank you, again, thanking Advanced Data Systems, but more importantly, thanking each of you, because if you're in healthcare and you're involved in IT, I know for a fact, having been involved in the business for over 15 years, just on the healthcare IT side, that your life is very complicated, and you have a lot of things that are demanding your time, and so investing in this webinar is something that I don't take lightly, and I appreciate you uh, making that time investment. I'd like to just introduce, as Mark said, we are part of a company called Hosting.com. Just by way of introduction, Hosting, uh, at a glance, we are a managed services and cloud hosting provider focusing primarily on critical infrastructure. We have three primary vertical markets. One of those is healthcare, the others two are financial services, and then online and e-commerce. Hosting has about 13,000 managed servers. Uh, under management currently. We have six Tier 2 data centers all located in the U.S., none internationally, which has HIPAA implications. And we have roughly 180, between 180 and 200 healthcare customers. Very strong HIPAA security and other compliance issues. So that's who hosting is. As we start off, it, it is true that this cartoon depicts it. 50% of Americans think cloud computing has something to do with clouds. And then our good friend there on the right says, you mean it doesn't. So he's part of that 50%. So there's a lot of confusion and uncertainty around cloud. Um, I like to use this graphic to actually convey something way back from The Matrix, the movie The Matrix with Lawrence Fishburne. And I love this meme because in the end, and I'm kind of giving you the punchline right from the beginning, there, there is really no such thing as cloud in the sense that your computers are flying around in the air somewhere. Your data is just on someone else's computer. So whether it's in another office, uh, at your set, at your home office, or at a data center in in your town, or in a colocation facility, or in data centers that are distributed around the country, basically your data is just on somebody else's computer. So as we get involved in cloud, as I said, it gets complicated very, very quickly. And the considerations around cloud infrastructure are kind of listed on this page. You know, things like productivity and scalability and security and performance. And how do you deal with all of those issues? And we want to kind of break that down. At the, but at the get-go, we need to recognize that there's way too much information involved here to cover in a, a reasonable period of time. We could spend a couple of hours. We could spend a couple of days on this, and we're going to do this in uh, just a little under 30 more minutes and get through all of this information. I want to call your attention to the graphics on the upper right. There's some little clouds there that are colored, and this uh, is what I like to call breadcrumbs, and this helps you understand where we are in the presentation. So we've finished the introduction, and now we're going to be moving into the considerations, and as you watch those little clouds on the right-hand side, it'll kind of tell you what our progress is through the presentation. So we're going to use EHR selection as a framework, and I'm very excited about the fact that my title has actually been auto-corrected by Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, which it always does. So this is EHR selection as a framework. And there's three, fra three, three phases when you look at EHR selection. You look at you, the evaluation period, the rollout, and then maintenance. And so we're going to break things down into five pairs of considerations. And they're listed here, financing, acquisition, control, user experience, and human effects. So we're going to jump right into this. And first, we're going to talk about financing. How do you want to pay? How does your organization prefer to pay for things? 
And your two choices really are upfront versus over time. And we work with lots of different organizations, and some of them have a preference for capital expenditures and depreciation. They would like to spend it uh, in a capital mode, and then others would prefer to do it on an OPEX basis or do it over time. They have a preference for uh, for doing it over over a longer period of time. The last bullet there, cost allocation among providers, this has implications because let's say you spend thirty thousand or fifty thousand or three hundred thousand dollars, and then you know depending on the size of your organization, on a capital expenditure in 2016. How do you allocate that? Uh, with across providers that might join the organization in 2017 or 2018. And so cost allocation is a, is a big consideration for paying for that. Now as we go along, I'm going to introduce, in, a, in addition to these considerations, we're going to just in, uh, highlight a few myths. We're going to come back to them later and go through them in detail, but there is a myth that saves money. That's uh, that's a myth because it's not always true. We'll talk about that in a minute. The second consideration around financing and paying for your IT is what's your anticipated growth? Do you anticipate just kind of growing organically, using uh, more providers but doing basically the same kind of business? Or are you looking at acquisitions, new service lines? Are you thinking of adding PT or an imaging center or some other kind of treatment center or opening new locations? So your anticipated growth has a big impact on these decisions as well. There is a myth associated with cloud that it locks you in. And so we'll come back and talk about that in, in a little bit as well. So what I'd like to do is present the concepts from the previous slide, those two pairs of concepts. I'd like to present them graphically. So on the horizontal axis, axis we have accounting preference. On the left-hand side is one-time or CapEx expenditures. And on the right-hand side is pay as you go. On the vertical axis, axis, sorry, we're looking at anticipated growth. Is your anticipated growth low, or is it high or unknown? Then that would be on the high end. If you favor CapEx, and if your anticipated growth is low, then an on-site solution or a non-cloud solution would be the direction that you should go. If, on the other hand, you prefer a pay-as-you-go or OPEX solution and or your anticipated growth is high or unknown, that would favor a cloud solution. So what we're saying here is there's no such thing as the, as the ideal solution for everybody. It really depends on what your organization situation is relative to these two issues. Sometimes CapEx. That favors on-site. High growth and pay-as-you-go, that favors cloud. So you would decide for your organization which of those made sense. Let's look at the second pair of considerations. And this is acquisition of what I just call IT stuff. So this would be your existing IT systems. How old are they? How are they configured? What's the growth capacity for them? Are they end of life? Do they need to be replaced? Or do you have a lot of capacity left? You have, let's say you're on a three-year lease and you still have two years left on your lease. Or let's say they're still under warranty and those kinds of things. There's a myth associated with cloud that it's always the best solution. And that's not always the case, as we will learn over the next few minutes. The, the partner or the secondary consideration here is changing needs in the organization. Are the needs to the business and clinical uh, situation are your business and clinical drivers changing frequently? Also, do you have fixed deadlines where you have to get something done by a certain point? These are considerations that will lead into whether uh, cloud or on-site is a better solution. There's a myth associated with cloud that it creates more stress on your network and more dependence. And we'll talk about that in a minute and uh, dispel that myth. Again, let's graph this in what's sometimes called the magic quadrant. In an XY condition, if your existing IT systems are brand new on the left versus end of life on the right, and then in the vertical axis, are your needs changing infrequently or are they changing frequently? If your, if your equipment is new and your needs don't change all that much, then an on-site solution might be the right solution for you. On the other hand, if your needs are changing very frequently, and your existing IT systems are end of life and you're looking at a big 
capital refresh, which is typically not budgeted, then cloud might be an appropriate solution. So that's the second consideration. If you look at the breadcrumbs on the right, you'll see that we're slowly ticking those off. Uh, I like to break things up a little bit. So just let you pause and read that. You can't do an IT talk without a little bit of humor sprinkled in here and there. Let's go to our third pair of considerations, and this is control. How do you like compliance? Do you want it to be solved automatically, or is it based on memos and training? In this case, the compliance we're talking about primarily is HIPAA security, but there are other compliance issues as well. There is a myth associated with cloud that cloud is insecure or that it's less secure. What about control over your data? What's your comfort level with third-party data providers? Do you insist on having your data on site or, or you know, down the hall from you or so on? Um, or are you comfortable with third-party providers having control over or access to your data? And another question that really needs to be asked is, does, does location really determine data control? There's a myth associated with cloud that third parties own your data. And again, we'll come back and talk about that in a little bit. So let's take these two variables, compliance and control. Let's graph them like we did the others. And we have compliance on the horizontal axis. Do you feel comfortable with compliance being handled through memos and training, which is the way it's done most of the time? Or do you want compliance to just be sort of hidden and behind the scenes and automatic and users don't really interact with it. It's just taken care of automatically. The vertical axis, third-party control, how comfortable or uncomfortable are you? If you're very uncomfortable with third-party data control and you're okay with compliance being more manual through memos and training, then an on-site solution is fine. If you're comfortable with other people having access or control over your data, and you want compliance to be done automatically, that would favor a cloud solution. Again, as I mentioned, we have to sprinkle in a little bit of humor in the midst of IT, any kind of technology talk. I love this one. I don't know how many of you have ever had a fatal error. And so we have the Grim Reaper. This could be actually a really fatal error for that user. Our fourth consideration is user experience. How reliant are the users on technology, and where are your users? Do they stay in one place, or do they go to multiple locations? Do they go to the hospital? Do they go to an imaging center? Do they go to a hospice? You know, what, what do your providers and users, where do they use things? And is your staff very tech savvy? The myth, there's a myth associated with cloud that it provides the best experience for users. What about new technologies that you're embracing? Uh, things like patient portal, patient reporting, patient satisfaction, mobile applications, medication compliance. Most of these are cloud ready. In fact, most of them require that to be on the cloud if it's a new technology. What are their release schedules? Do they release new updates monthly or quarterly or annually or whatever? And do you have applications that run on older architecture? And there's a myth associated that more features means better a better application. An example I like to use is Microsoft Word. We're on the 14th version of the Microsoft Office stack. So that means there's been 14 different releases. And yet 90% of us use the features of spell checking and formatting and maybe page numbering and paragraph indents, and that's about it. And so all of that capability was available in the first release, and everything else that's come along since then has added more features, but you would be tough to argue that it's actually made the product better. Let's graph these two variables. The technology reliance by your staff, if it's low, that would be on the left-hand side. Very high reliance on the technology on the high. On the high side would be on the right. New technologies that are not cloud ready would be on the lower part of the vertical axis. And if you're looking at new technologies that are cloud ready, that would be on the top. So if you have not cloud ready and low technology reliance, that favors an on-site solution. 
cloud-ready technologies and a high reliance on technology by your users, including users being located in a bunch of, uh, of locations, that would absolutely favor a cloud solution. If you look on the right-hand side, our little breadcrumbs, we're slowly ticking those off. The next thing that we're going to look at is the human effect. In the human effect, we have two different variables. First is IT staffing. The, and the reason I put culture in here is because IT people, I don't know if you've noticed, and I, maybe there's even some IT people on this call, IT people have a very different mindset, and culturally they're very different than the rest of the people in an organization. It's very hard for an organization, a healthcare organization, <clears throat> to interview, hire, attract, and retain good IT people. They get frustrated. They're kind of a lone wolf usually. They don't get a lot of support, but the culture is very different. Also, it's very hard to get adequate skills in one or two or three people. You need, uh, you need basically the skills from a medical standpoint. You need everything from a midwife to a physical therapist to a brain surgeon. And those are very, very different skill sets in healthcare. We tend not to think of that on the IT side, but it's definitely true. And the last thing, obviously, is adequate headcount. <clears throat> so you need to ask yourself, how involved do you want to be in the IT staffing arena? There's a myth associated with cloud that it doesn't require any IT. We'll dispel that here in just a minute. The other component to the human effects are on the user side. What are your workflows like? Do you have extremely custom features? Have you customized your workflow to the point, like it says in the second bullet, where every provider has their own workflow? We worked with a group not long ago that there were 23 physicians in the group, and they had 23 different workflows and 23 completely different set of forms. And this was not a multi-specialty organization where you had primary care, peds, internal medicine, and OB. This was a single specialty, 23 providers, 23 completely different sets of workflows. So how customized is your system versus doing uh, best practices? There's a myth associated with cloud that it solves all of your problems. So let's go ahead and graph those. And on, to make this simple, I just put on the left-hand side, you, either, you love IT, you love IT staffing, you love maintaining it, having that as a core competency within your organization. But on the right-hand side, I just call it hate IT. So you either love it or hate it. That's our horizontal axis. Our vertical axis is more custom workflows on the, on the lower part, and on the high part, more standard workflows. And of course, more custom and loving IT favors an on-site solution. Well, you might ask yourself, you might be asking me, why do I have more custom favoring an on-site solution? That's because the more custom your application is, the more you're going to have to invest in local, local on-site and embedded IT resources that can understand and work to maintain on a daily basis those customized workflows because the less standard they are, the more need there's going to be for uh, direct, uh, direct oversight and direct management. On the other hand, if you're able, which we find most organizations are very interested in getting much more standard in their workflows, and they also don't want to invest in IT, then that favors a cloud solution. So this is the very last part of our consideration piece. We have to pause a little bit for some IT humor. We, um, again, this, this graphic plays on the idea that there's somehow some magic cloud somewhere where all the data is stored, and of course that's not the case. They're in bomb-proof data centers uh, spread around the country. So I promised at the beginning that there would be a checklist, and so what I've done is taken all of those graphs from the last 10 slides or so and the horizontal and vertical axis, and I put them into a checklist. And if you want to um, email, the, use the email that's on the invite for the webinar, we'll send you a copy of this checklist and you can do it for yourself. And the way it works is you simply put in on a score of 1 to 10 uh, what your preferences are one way or the other. So, for example, if you have a slight preference for CapEx, let's say it's on a scale of 1 to 10, let's say it's a 6, then your, fa your propensity to do OpEx would be a four. 
So the two need to add up to 10. It could be 10, 10 versus 1, it could, or 9 versus 1, or it could be 5 and 5 as you go through each one of these, but you just want to make sure that they add up to 10. And then when you get all done with those, then it will tally up a score for you, and it will tell you whether you are better off with an on-site solution versus a cloud solution. So this is your checklist. Uh, if you'll email us, we will be happy to send this out in a, uh, an Excel file that actually does the computations for you automatically. But these are all of the considerations that we just went through uh, in detail. Okay, so that's the checklist. Now we're on to myths. So we're on the downside of our presentation here, or our webinar. And so I'm going to do myths on the left-hand side and then the reality on the right-hand side. And you'll notice I've divided, I've got pro in green and con in red. The myths that are out there have a strong function of whoever the speaker is and what they're, what they're trying to promote. So green means it's very pro-cloud and red means that it's anti-cloud. And that usually means that somebody who doesn't like cloud services because they don't sell cloud services and they're more of an on-site uh, IT company. So a pro solution, a pro myth is that cloud's always the best solution. And as we've just gone through our 10 considerations, your needs are what drives the solution, not, it, not just you automatically going to cloud. Uh, something that's a knock, a neg negative on cloud is it causes more network stress. So somehow you need you know, fatter pipes and more internet access, and that's technically true but if you have more than one office, you have that same network stress as well because you're connecting back to the mothership where all of your data is. And so every one of your offices has the same vulnerability as if you had cloud. So it just needs to be architected properly. And if it's not architected properly, that's where the stress comes in. There's a, a myth that cloud is less secure. That could be the case if the cloud provider is not a secure and very compliant organization. However, in addition to that, security is foundational within cloud providers. The physical security alone and power protection and backup and air conditioning and those kinds of things is way better than what any typical practice could afford. There's a myth that it eliminates the need for IT staff, and that's not the case. What it does give you the ability to do is to dial resources up and down that are as needed, but you still need on-site IT staff. You might need several to take care of users because there's still user issues even if you have your platforms in the cloud. There's a myth that cloud will always solve all of your problems, but the reality is that the perfection is unrealistic and the goal is to have continuous improvement. The cloud allows you to tailor and modify and tweak your solution as you go. There's a myth that cloud is always lower cost. This is a myth because Cloud actually provides higher value services. Now, I will say that I have never seen a situation where you compared all of the security and redundancy and failover and replication capabilities. If you tried to build those things for yourself on site, that in 99% of the cases is much more expensive for an individual practice to do. There's a myth that contracts lock you in on cloud. You should. You work with a provider that allows you to get out with 30 days notice. There's no reason whatsoever that you should be locked in for two or three or four or five years. So you should demand a 30 day out. And if you can't get that from a cloud provider, then you have the wrong, you're talking to the wrong kind of person. There's a myth that third parties own your data. And I would ask the question, who in reality owns your data now? We know of situations where even in-house IT staff who had the passwords and had the backup tapes basically held their organization hostage because they got upset over how they were treated from a salary perspective or other things. And so you should cover this in the contract and there is no reason to be concerned about this if you have the right partner. There's a myth that cloud provides the best experience for users. And it's true that it's the best experience for distributed users. What that means is if you have more than one office, Cloud absolutely is the best experience across the board. If you have one office and all of your users are in that one office, there is nothing that compares to the performance of an on-site server and everybody connected on the solid blue cable that goes in the wall and connects to a server that's down the hall. 
So if that's your situation, an on-site solution is best. However, that situation is very, very rare, and in most places they have multiple sites and users that are working from home and working from other facilities. So cloud is the best experience for distributed users. Lastly, you might have a cloud provider who tells you that their, that their cloud solution, that their data center is HIPAA certified. That's a really bad sign because there's no such thing as a HIPAA certified cloud yet for data centers. So winding up here, our last section is on actual definitions of some terms that you might have heard. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is you might have heard the term SaaS or software as a service. Here's the layman's definition and that's where you have an IT service provider renting software such as in the HR in their data center and not yours and you'll see on the screen here so probably some familiar names Salesforce, Office 365, Gmail and Pinterest. And of course, Advanced Data Systems Corporation offers the uh, uh, their Medics EHR in a cloud SaaS model, and so it's exactly like these other solutions. It's it's offered in a SaaS model where the software is provided as a service. You don't own and have an installation or own the license for it. You're just using it as you go, just like these other solutions. So this is the definition of SaaS: software as a service. This is probably the most common cloud service that you will encounter. The next most common is what's called IaaS, which is infrastructure as a service. The layman's definition of this is that you have an IT service provider who rents to you servers and switches and data storage in their data centers and where you can install and run your EHR. And so if you are tech savvy and you want to uh, basically rent servers and storage systems and but still buy your license from advanced data systems outright that's absolutely an option and then you would go with what's called an IaaS provider and here are some of the IaaS providers that are out there and you can see in the lower right hosting is an infrastructure provider as well as a managed services company and so that's the company that I work for and there are others as well Microsoft Azure Amazon Web Service, Rackspace, uh, and there are others as well. So this is the definition of IaaS, or infrastructure as a service. The last one that you'll sometimes hear, and I say it's not important because it's not as relevant as the other two, is platform as a service. This is where an IT service provider rents software development tools in their data center, not yours. And here's some examples. There are fewer of them, Microsoft Azure, has solutions for uh, application developers, the Google App Engine, Salesforce, and others. So with those three definitions, now we're going to, to conclude with an actual working definition. So you will come out of this webinar understanding, again, cutting through the fog, you'll understand what cloud is. So cloud provides IT resources, such as computing and storage, which would be an IaaS provider, or data and applications, which would be a SaaS provider, or software tools, which would be a platform as a service provider, typically accessed remotely from an external location, and it's typically on a pay-as-you-go basis. So that, my friends, is what cloud is. I was at a conference earlier this week in Los Angeles and I was talking to a fairly experienced healthcare executive and she said I have no idea what cloud is and I don't want to have anything to do it do with it and I, I thought to myself well time to cut through the fog and really understand what cloud is and what it can provide so now let's talk about what cloud does for you so cloud is really designed and is very helpful for high growth OPEX focused businesses who have a limited IT staff to quickly deploy solutions to a distributed workforce using automated systems to enforce compliance. So that is what cloud does for you. So as you can see, cloud is 
really, at the end of the day, there's all kinds of hype and there's all kinds of people pretending that it's brand new and it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's actually been around for years and years and years by various names. It's very mature and it has now morphed into something that this is one of the reasons why roughly 80% of all healthcare organizations are going to the cloud because these are the things that it provides. So some parting thoughts. Hopefully when we get to heaven, we will not be asked for a username and password. So I appreciate the time that you've invested. This is my contact information. There's also contact information on the website, on the webinar invite, and we invite you to weigh in with questions. We did have one question that came in, and that is, how complicated is it or how hard is it to develop and implement a cloud strategy? And the answer to the question is, is twofold. It depends on your organization. If you're a very sophisticated IT person, and you know exactly what you need from a storage and computing and network and bandwidth capability and you basically could order servers and you would know exactly what to order, you can go online to a platform as a service company such as ours or others and you could basically order up your server and data storage and network infrastructure on a menu. On the other hand, if you're not that sophisticated person, and in case, and in fact, we would suggest for most people, you actually talk to a person and get some kind of design or integration or consulting help on that before deciding on implementing a cloud solution. So that's the answer to that question. Again, thank you very much for your time and attention. Be happy to respond to any additional questions that come in later. And if you want to send in your questions uh, on the email that's listed on the webinar invite, that would be great. Thank you very much.